we buy into the 1025 game here in Houston for $5,000 and you're right after it with pocket eights and decide to come in for a cold four bet to $1,100. Our opponent in the hand is none other than the Houston legend, the Joker, and he decides to put in the call. He was the one who three bet. We are going heads up out of position to a flop. On a Jack-Jack 4 board, he's going to have a lot of overcard, so I want to go for a little bit of protection here, and I decide to bet out into the $1,700 pot. My sizing is a little bit less than half the size of it, and uh, the Joker puts in the call, leading us off to a pretty good card on the turn, the King of Hearts. I should have more of the strong kings in my range. However, with two jacks out there, I would play it safe if I had a king in my hand and start with a check here, which is exactly what I do with my eights. Joker checks it back and the five of diamonds peels off on the river. It's a pretty big brick. There's 4,000 in the middle and I have around 2.3K in my stack. Now the question is, do we rip it all in here for value or do we check it over to him and allow him to bluff or bet a worse hand? I decide that the best play here is to rip it all in and when we get snap called, that's definitely not good news. You can see my face here when he turns over quads. And just like that, straight out of the gate, we are losing an $8,700 pot. Pocket eights go down in flames and the jacks. Flop quads take it down a massive one here in Houston. All right, I add back in for another $5,000 and we look down at the beautiful seven deuce offsuit from the dealer button. It's $100 a person. We are playing the seven deuce game. So if I can get this through here with my cold four bet to 1200 over Benji's three bet to 500, well, we'd be in store for a nice chunk of change coming our way. You can see that my cold four bet is pretty strong in the eyes of Will T, who decides to fold none less than pocket nines. Pretty uh, interesting fold there by him. Benji's in the hijack with a mystery hand and puts in the call. We're going heads up in position to a flop, which comes king, jack, five with one diamond. We flop ourselves a whole bunch of nothing. When Benji checks it to me, pretty great board for me to go for a C bet on. There's 2,600 in the middle, and I like a one-third pot size bet. Guess it depends on what the bet is here. How do you play this after he checks? I go for around $800, and Benji decides to put in the call. At this point, he could have any assortment of hands like any weak jacks. He could have queen-10, ace-queen, ace-10. Who knows? He could even have a hand like king-jack or queen-jack as well. When the eight of diamonds peels off on the turn and Benji checks it over to myself once again, I debate going for around a pot size bet on this turn and uh, setting up a river jam. However, I think a little bit better of it and check behind here if Benji's calling me on the flop. Although the eight of diamonds doesn't really change too much on the turn, he obviously had some connectivity with the board and I'd rather a lot of the draws miss on the river and then go for a bluff as opposed to bluffing on the turn he calls and then the pot is just way too big and he'd have to call any of my river sizings. On the six of diamond river, Benji thinks about it for a few seconds before checking it over to me for a third time. Now I feel like I only have one good option here and rip my entire stack into the middle. The odds of him backing into a river flush are pretty slim. And if he has a hand like ace jack, queen jack, jack 10, I need to put him to the test here and try to get him to fold. I think if I had some kings in my hand, I would check the turn with them. So I definitely think he could fold a jack in this spot. In which case, I'm going to go all in here and uh, we get snap called by queen jack of diamonds, which is essentially the nuts. Benji just gets really lucky there and is going to win $5,200 off of me, a 10.2k pot going over his way. And just like that, we are down two buy-ins early on here at Champions Club Texas. But we're going to dig deep here, buy in for another $5,000. In hand number 23, we look down at Jax. I raise it to 150 and get 3-bet by my direct left, Matt. He puts in the 3-bet to 500. I put in the call instead of just 4-betting because his early position range is very strong. On a queen at 10-6 board, I decide to check call. And the turn gives me an open-ended straight draw. I check it over to him once again. He bets small and I put in the call for a second time, bringing in a brick on the river. When I check for a third time, I expect him to check behind with a lot of his hands. If he bets here, it's very polarizing, either a bluff or a made hand. So uh, when he bets large on the river, I find an easy fold. My pair of jacks can't be good here. All right, hand number 28 might be the most interesting one of the night. The yellow dots next to our names mean that the knit game is on. For $100 a pop, it's pretty pricey, so we want to get rid of that as soon as possible. Benji in the plus three position decides to open up a mystery hand. And I look down at the beautiful ace-king offsuit from the cutoff, and what do I decide to do? 
none less than put my entire stack all in there for $4,700. Yeah, I was like, Dude, I just like, got a rivet here. from Benji <laughs> and an all-in <laughs> from Wolfgang with Ace King. I'm in for $15,000 at this point, so yeah, it looks a little bit like I'm on tilt, which is exactly what I want Benji to think. I also could be doing this with a lot of hands like pocket sevens through pocket jacks, so I don't really blame him here for thinking about it. He obviously doesn't have a great hand. I put the double mudkip on my cards for the good luck, and uh, Benji's thinking about it for a while here. Now before I get roasted in the comments for uh, jamming all in over a very small bet, I mean there's a lot of dynamics here. The Nick game's on, I could be perceived to be on tilt, and uh, I have a very good hand here, and if I can get hands like 7s and 8s to fold, technically that's a win, because they are ahead of me at this point. So when Benji decides to put in the call, we see great news. He has none less than the best hand we want to see, ace-queen offsuit. We are in a great shape to double up here and get some of the money back from those last hands. We're going to go off to a flop. Benji wants to run it twice, but of course, because I'm stuck, we're going to run it one time. 75% chance here to double up, and the flop comes 8-3. Queen? How does a queen come out there? One of his three outs come on the flop, and now we are going to need to catch a lucky card on the turn or river to catch up. The deuce of clubs doesn't help in the slightest. We had some running straight draws, but now they are dead, and the river seals our fate. Benji taking it down with two pair. How brutal is that? Ace king versus ace queen. In a normal situation, you just got to shake it off, but in this one, I'm now stuck three buy-ins, and that seemed like my miracle ticket out of this one. Sick game, Utoy. Sick game. As you can see, I'm throwing the party here. I'm down 17.6k, and I still have the knit button in front of me, so definitely not the way we wanted to start off this stream, but, but we didn't come all the way down to Houston to give up. Definitely not. I look down at the pocket Ochos from the plus two position and raise it up to $200. You can see a bunch of players put in the call, leading us off to the flop, which gives me an overpair. I decide to bet it one more time, and we're going to get looked up by the Joker, who has 10-3 of clubs. Bottom pair here seems to be good enough for him to put in the call. No one wants me to win a hand here at Champions. They're all just getting really sticky, trying to outturn me. But uh, luckily for me, the five of spades is not one of those cards Joker can improve on. So when he checks over to me for a second time, I go for a bet. He folds, and uh, I make a joke that uh, I finally have won a hand on the session. You know it's bad when you're winning like a thousand, two thousand dollar pot, and they're all like, "Good job, nice hand." <laughs> right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I feel really good about myself. You're doing myself great. Right yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> this next hand, I raise the dealer button up to $100 with king, queen of diamonds. I get three bet, and we see a flop, which comes jack for deuce. When Andrew bets out on this flop, I find an easy fold. And look at that, he had ace-king offsuit, so uh, we made a good fold in this one here. We see a limp and a raise from Outlaw. I decide to come in for a three bet here with none less than seven deuce offsuit. I'm going to try this once again. Hopefully it doesn't yield the same results. When I three bet to 525, it folds back around to Outlaw, who still has his nip button in front of him. He decides to rip his entire 2.3k stack all in in the middle. Look at my face. This is definitely not the desired outcome. He has king-queen offsuit, so obviously I can do nothing but fold my seven high. Sure, I may be a little bit on tilt, but I'm not enough on tilt to put in the call with seven deuce offsuit and try to scoop this pot. So uh, yeah, we are losing that hand, moving us right into the next one, where Matt decides to raise early position to $150 with none less than King Kong. See a few calls from Will Joker, Benji, and uh, myself here with Ace Deuce Offsuit. I put in the call, not great percentage to win this one here, but uh, we are going five ways to the flop. Joker and myself flop top pair on an Ace 9-6 with two diamond board. The action unfortunately checks through, bringing in the Queen of Diamonds on the turn, and uh, Benji's hot night continues. He has turned himself the flush. Benji checks to me, and I make a pretty disciplined check here. I think a lot of people would start to bet, given the fact they have top pair and a diamond draw. However, there's a lot of people behind me, so I expect a lot of them to do the betting for me, and that's why I decided to check. Checks over to Joker. Will he bet now or check with his ace? He goes for a small bet, and Benji decides just to put in the call. That brings in myself as well. I'm not going to be raising here with three diamonds out there. And the river card comes a brick, the eight of clubs. I guess it does bring in some straight draws like 5-7 and 7-10. However, uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of a brick. The action checks through on the river. The Joker doesn't want to go for one more street of value. And uh, Benji kind of wins the minimum here with his flush. Although winning another pot 
Definitely seems like a foreign thing to me. I would have loved to take this one down. Right, if you guys were confused as to why I said Benji was running hot tonight, this is a prime example. Hand number 55 uh, seems like a flip. Will T with queens, Benji with ace king offsuit. What's that? Benji just flops three of a kind, turn quads. Yeah, there's not many. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, well you can't hold the aces on the worst board, so yeah, that means yeah. Why did that have to be against this guy? Can I pick somebody else? On the one. <laughs> he's he's make a one outer on the next one. And he's going to scoop that first board. They're running it twice, and Will T looks pretty good all the way through the turn until the river card comes. The Case King, yes. Oh! oh! oh wow. no. One-outer. Oh! Is that a that scoop? That was a one-outer. You actually yeah, yeah, can't right The only king left in the deck because someone said they folded the other king. Absolutely nuts. How does Benji do it? He's taking down that massive pot and uh, his sun run continues. He looks down at a hand here from the hijack and raises up to 150. I decide to put in the call instead of three betting, which brings in the GTO lizard, Elijah, who I play with a bunch in Dallas. We're going three ways to the flop, which gives me a pair and a backdoor flush and straight draw, and the action checks over to me. I decide to check behind, and that brings in a board pairing ace of diamonds, and a GTO lizard checks it over to Benji. There's 485 in the middle, and he bets 225. I put in the pretty quick call. The river card isn't great. It puts an overcard to my queen. It comes the king of hearts. If Benji was bluffing with a hand like king jack or king 10 on the turn, he now has improved to the best hand. And he decides to bet out for $750 into the $900 pot. It's around two thirds the size of the pot, so it's pretty big. Seems like value, but what value does he have? Was he slow playing an ace on the flop? Then he bets turn and bets river. That could make some sense. There aren't too many better queens than myself, like king queen and queen jack. Although I think he might go for value with king queen, but not queen jack. They probably would just want to get to showdown. So that leaves all the other king x in his range. And then a bunch of bluffs. You also can't forget the seven deuce game is on. So have to consider that as well. Seems like a coin flip for me here between calling and folding. I decide to fold, which ultimately was the wrong decision because Benji has seven deuce. He's taking down that $1,600 pot. Plus, he gets another $100 out of myself and the others here at the table. Too bad I couldn't have been a hero there in that hand, put in the call, win myself a nice pot, and save everyone a bit of money. All right, I'm heads up in the knit game here. Myself versus Matt on my left. Will T opens it up from the plus one position to $150 with seven deuce offsuit. Gotta respect the hustle there. And I decide to rip in my $2,700 stack with ace deuce of hearts. Matt's in a tough spot here in the small blind. If he folds, he immediately loses $800. And uh, if he goes all in here, he's getting it in with 10-8 offsuit, so it can't be the best situation in the world. Action folds around, and we are going heads up here in a 5.6K pot. And uh, yeah, we are going to run this one time. One time, dealer, please let me win a hand. The table audio is kind of funny here, so uh, let's just roll that for this one. Did you ever get in? No. We got to turn it over. Come on. Okay. Tell me how to take back here. Wow. Oh, let's oh, go, baby. Uh, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that was so good. <laughs> wrong game, buckle rat. Yeah, 10 8. What did you fold? Seven dudes. Jerry's wrong game, buckle rat. Yeah. So, what are you doing? I don't even know. <laughs> Jerry's the best. Oh, oh, my God. That's so ugly. You're good. Yeah, you're still bad. alive. That's so ugly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Everyone just Everyone just No, the no, fuck things up. can change. Nothing changes. No one say a word. Let the Let the dealer do his job. Oof. He's doing absolutely See? wonderful right now. <laughs> Ten of diamonds. You shut up. <laughs> you have nothing to say. Nothing good to come out of whatever's coming out of your mouth here. Oh, oh, that oh is God. appropriate of, of a river. <laughs> I've never seen one. Finally, we win a pot. It's a nice size one. We get rid of our knit button. And uh, why does Matt have his hand on his head? I'm the one throwing the party here, stuck a bunch of money. But I guess uh, no one likes to be called a knit and lose the game. Wolfgang finally getting a good run out. Yeah, it, yeah. Finally is right. <laughs> this next hand, Benji raises pocket sixes from the plus two. I decide to three bet him, but end up misclicking to 1175. I should have gone way lower, but accidentally grabbed too many chips. And uh, I shake Benji's hand here, try to get him to put some money in the middle, but ultimately he folds his card still with a knit button in front of him. All right, Will raises it up to 250. Joker puts in the call. I come in for a three bet to $1,100 from the small blind. I'll be out of position the rest of the way. Do we get any customers here? No, Will folds king queen offsuit. And the Joker is going to try to battle with Wolfgang here with my favorite hand, pocket sevens. 
Joker better proceed with some caution here playing my hand against me and the flop comes king, queen, deuce. And look at that, Will would have flopped top two pairs. So unfortunately for him, he was not in the hand to see this one. But I'm gonna go for a bet on this flopping top pair, top kicker. And a Joker is going to muck pocket sevens. Will, Will, put it in. Next hand, we pick up ace, queen of clubs from the dealer button. I raise it up to $400. Will T and the Joker both put in the call with some pretty speculative hands. We're gonna go three ways to a flop, which comes jack, six, four with one club. I have two over cards, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. So when the action checks to me, gonna find out exactly where I'm at in the hand and I bet out for 550. That clears the field, so a little bit of momentum here, moving right into hand number 99, where we pick up pocket kings. I don't want this night to end. I want to make a little bit more money back. I decided to raise it up to $400 from the cutoff. And uh, we are going to get action from the Joker in the $200 straddle he puts in the call with a mystery hand. It's a mystery hand to you guys, but it's also a mystery hand to the Joker because he has announced that he has not looked at his cards. And the flop comes 7-4 deuce. I decide to bet out for the same price, $400. And without looking, the Joker puts in the call, bringing in the turn card, which comes the 8 of diamonds. He checks it over to me for a second time, and I'm gonna copy and paste here because he hasn't looked at his cards. The odds are in my favor that I have the best hand, so I definitely don't want him to fold. Want to keep him in this fun hand. You know what? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at one. He can look at one. Oh, I have Jerry. to look at one. He can look at one. It's on the turn. He can it's look at one. One. It's and on the river, that's right. That's right. right. And I don't want him to fold his cards. However, he says he's going to look at one card. If it's good enough to call, he's going to put in the money. So I'm hoping he has some sort of one pair because he's definitely not folding at that point. They're looking at his cards. He decides to put in the call, bring in the 10 of spades on the river, checks it over to me once again, and I'm going to go for $400. This was a comedy hand, so I can't be changing the price of poker. He snap calls. I turn over my kings. Wow. Hold on, he only looked at one. He only looked at that. I haven't looked at the other one yet, so I might just have a pair. Oh, go no. peel. Oh, it's a 10. <laughs> no, peel, 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 peel. Bock it up, bock it up. Oh, oh my god. god. So close. Three times. <laughs> yes. Two, three times. Yes. Yes. In the middle. I win. I win. <laughs> I said, I said, Taking down guy, the last hand of the night. Uh, where, where, where can they follow you, bro? You, they what get a fun scream. It's always fun when Wolfgang comes to town. Stars. So we had a gutter on the turn. He makes a pair on the river. Top pair to be exact. But look at that. We are taking down a $3,000 pot with Pocket Kings. Thank you very much for giving me a little bit of money in that hand joker. It's going to a good place. All right, you guys, wrapping up that uh, huge champion session, a disaster session for your boy here. Got in for $5,000, and I was hoping that's all it would take to get the job done. But sadly, we ended up topping up an additional $17,600. Can't believe I'm saying that. And only got out for a total of $82,15. So net loss, $14,385 in around five and a half hours of play. Not my best showing, but also uh, didn't really run the best. Ace King versus Ace Queen. I uh, can't really blame it on myself. They're getting in good in a around 12K pot. Seven deuce, maybe I don't blast off on the river against Benji's flush, but also maybe he just doesn't get there on the river. And a few other interesting spots as well, running into quads, can't really plan for that. If you guys want to make my night a little bit better, hit the like and subscribe buttons. A lot more cool content coming your way. Playing in a private jet hangar in the middle of Alabama. So that'll be an interesting vlog. That's the next one. And then we got some WSOP Bahamas footage coming your way before the 12 days of Wolfmas kickoff on December 14th. Posting every single day for 12 days straight and giving away all the profits to you guys. So a lot of fun things to come on the channel. Hit that like and subscribe button. Good luck in the felt. And I'll catch you as always in the next video. Peace.